Hi everyone and welcome to the Witch Doctor's Guide to ServiceNow, episode number 35. Uh, today we want to talk just a short one about the system property that ends with no rows and what that does and how it can actually help you, especially when you're doing uh, scripting and stuff like that. Uh, let me see if I can get the PowerPoint working. There we go. My name is Goran Lundqvist. I, I work for ServiceNow as a developer. Um, been doing a lot of stuff uh, besides service now as well before but the last oh my god seven years uh, i guess i've been working with service now as a customer a partner and on service now as well uh, a lot of other stuff uh, if you haven't seen me before you, also, you can take a look you have my links on, on the side that you can click to easier access the stuff but let's let's dive into this uh Thing that i'm going to show you now so very small agenda let's take a look at this specific um, system property how it works and you should actually have it on your instant if you don't have it so let's take a look so let me see here so in the documentation we have one page that has a lot of system properties and not all system properties exist in the instance out of the box but you need to create them themselves if they don't exist they often have a default value so if you don't have this system property as a record false is the value it will have in the backend code and so on so let's let's take a look first so this is the system property the glide.invalidquery.returnRows and what it actually do is by default if you're writing a script that has some issues in the query it will ignore that specific query and just fetch the rest so what am i talking about let's go to scripts background so you can see or let's go to incidents first just to show you since i'm going to look at let's get all incidents so we have 73 incidents in total but how many of them are active so let's hit active equals true hit run and we have 45 yes so let's go to scripts and i have a simple script here let's see if i can just paste it in i hope this one so basically you can see i go into the incident table i say give me all incidents where the active field is true i do a query and then just to show you i'm just throwing out how many records i'm seeing and what's the encoded query that i'm using to actually get this so right now we don't have the property we have a correct query i'll hit run and we get 45 you can see this is the query now what if i accidentally mistyped the field line like this what happens let's hit run first of all we get uh, an info message this is actually just a warning that that field doesn't exist but at the bottom you can see it returned 73 records with this query so since this query is not valid it ignores that part so that means that if i just to show you add another one so get ink gr dot add query short description and i'll just do something like that i'll hit run now you can see that it finds zero it actually shows I, I was actually wondering if it removed it from here but it doesn't it still shows there but since this one returns zero it will not help anything but the biggest issue is this one you actually get all of the records because this part is being ignored so you might be looping through the wrong stuff and so on so let's go to the system properties I got it here. Copy that one. Let's create it and see what happens. 
So that's the one. It's a true false. And the value is true. So return no rows. What happens? I'll hit save. Oops, wrong one. So now it's correct. Just make sure. 45. But now I'm going to mistype it. And now you can see it returns zero records. And of course, a query that this query is not valid. The biggest part here is that it's easier for you to find issues. Of course, if you return 45 or 73, you might not notice this because you're just hoping it to loop through a couple of records and do some other stuff. But if it returns zero, you will notice that something is wrong. So that is one of the biggest thing for you to, the biggest reason for having it is to find issues like this. It could actually be a security issue as well if an ACL is using this code and suddenly a user can see more records than it's actually allowed to do. Uh, and for the last part, so this is mainly scripting, um, but I'm just thinking here, no, it can't happen. I mean, in the condition builder, you have the correct field name, so it can't actually happen there. So let's go back in short video. What I wanted you to talk about was this one. Uh, let's open this one and just to show you I normally actually take this one if I do stuff like adding new uh, system properties that isn't there from the baseline installation and put that in the description field as well so let's hit save so if I put this to false I get the same behavior as before when it's not there I'll hit save. And I'll hit run again with the wrong uh, field name. And I get the issue, the info message, and I get 73 back. So, short video talking about this system property, which actually says if you should return zero rows when you have some issue with the, the query uh, or not. I would recommend turning it on. Uh, put it on your sub prods first, of course, do some testing because if it hasn't been there, you might have functionality that suddenly stopped working because no one noticed that they actually got too many records and now suddenly they will get zero. So that's about it. Thanks for watching and hopefully I'll catch you soon again.